So today we're going to talk about the Adelo Express delivery module. And as with any good system in the point of sale industry, you always start with the order. So let's look at the different modes of operation to then create an order in the system. First, if you, uh, you can have a phone call or a call in type of order. Now the system does have caller ID, so that will speed up the process. The caller ID software will recognize the phone number as it comes in, look in the customer database to see what customer this is, bring that customer up on the screen to allow the operator to see who it is before they even answer the call. We also will post all the previous orders that have been entered by this for this customer, and you can use those to, to um, enter in the new order. So the recall orders, you can use one of those bef the orders before to enter in for the current order. The credit card can be taken manually, entered into the credit card terminal. So it can be a manual credit card as an option. So it can be pay at the store or pay at the door. So either way, the, the system does handle a phone call in order. Next up is third-party online orders. These are third-party companies that have interfaced into Adelo Express. We have those. They generally will uh, process the credit cards through their own interface. And whether you get a percentage of that is up for debate. That's between you and that third party. Sometimes you will. A lot of times you're not going to get anything from the credit card processing. They may have a per order or a per month fee that they will allow. That's up to them. Uh, that's between you and that third party. If you use Mesa online orders, they will process through Adelo Pay and you will get your split as uh, normal. So it is a definite with us that you're going to get something from the credit card processing through online orders. So let's talk about some delivery basics. Uh, first up, delivery orders have their own price level. They don't have to be the same price as the dine-in or to-go. In fact, we have up to six different prices based upon the order type for every item in the system. So you do get to have a different price level for the delivery. You have a different price level for um, bar, drive-through, whatever you want to label those uh, order types, you have a choice up to six different price levels for each item in the system. There's also the advanced pricing module that's a, that is also a really good option if you want to do specials, uh, special prices, discounts for a date and a time. The advanced pricing module is a great way of adjusting those prices and using that as promotions. Also, you do not have to have every item in the, in the menu available for delivery. There are certain foods, certain types of things that just don't go well in a delivery environment. So you don't have to choose every item. You get to select the items that you want to allow for the delivery in, of a, in the Adelo Express platform. Next up, uh, delivery surcharges. We have different ways of doing this. You can be by order type that all deliveries get a a surcharge. So just because it's a, a delivery, there is an option to have all deliveries have a delivery surcharge. You can do it by customer. So in addition to the order type, you can have a, a customer surcharge. This normally would be for a distance situation where it's a long way from the restaurant, but you can do it by customer. You can also do it by item. Maybe you want to have a surcharge for a specific item. It's one of those that takes a, a little bit more to do the delivery. You can have that surcharge by item. You can set the surcharge be a set amount or a percentage, either way. And it can be waived if the minimum order is met. So it's not, it, it can be automatically charged and forgiven once they meet a certain dollar amount. You have delivery zones and they are set up by zip code. And then there are surcharges by zip code. 
So if you have a zip code that you are is a little bit further from the restaurant, a, a surcharge can be entered in for that zip code. There's also a delivery area that is de defined by the distance from the store. This can be in, in miles or kilometers. And, and orders outside that delivery, delivery area are flagged. So when the customer calls in or the customer uh, address is entered into the system, the system will let you know that this is outside your normal delivery area. Do you wish to continue, yes or no? So we do have this as specified in the system and it does work very well. So what questions do you guys have at this point? I don't see anything in the chat, but uh, anybody want to unmute themselves and ask a question, now's a good time. All right, so this is the coffee database. This is my coffee database, and we are going to enter some orders. I'm going to do a delivery on the scooter. At this point, I'm doing it as if I'm having a call in. So I'm going to enter the last four digits of the phone number. I'm, obviously, I'm assuming that I don't have caller ID. I don't have a, a, a black box that will tell me the customer. So I'm going to bring that up. It recognizes the phone number. And now I have a delivery order that I've started. I'm just going to enter in some basic items. I'm going to have this be a pay at the door scenario. So I'm going to hit the checkbox, which now sends me back out. I can enter a second order. So you guys will notice here, he's not having to put in the full phone number um, because the customers are already in his, his database. So it's pulling from, from information that's already there. Um, this really speeds up production. Um, it makes a big difference for returning customers. Um, and then when you're seeing his return screen here, uh, you're seeing the customer name and phone number as well as their delivery address here. It's very easy now for people to see where things going, who they're going to, uh, what phone number and stuff they need all right there on the screen for them. If I were to log in as a driver, I then can go to the driver screen, which is here. And here's those two, two orders that I already had entered. The blue question mark allows you to see what is included in those orders. If I click on anywhere in the white area, I then select that to assign that delivery to be taken out and delivered. So now I've got these two that are checked. Down at the bottom, you have the blue assign button. I'm going to touch that, and then I get to pick the driver that I want to be assigning that to. So now those two orders are assigned to a driver. That driver now can be ready to go. If they are, then Mario just pick, touches his name, and I'll, then here are the two orders that he's going to then go deliver. You'll notice there's a on the line next to the red where it says unassigned. Well, to the left of that is a blue uh, email. So I'm gonna to touch that and email that to myself. Now that email is my default email in my uh, profile, in my uh, employee file. So it knows my email address. That's now sent that email to me and I'm going now to leave the restaurant. So I'm going to depart all, which is that blue button to the right there. Now, I'm gone. I'm out of here. This driver is now gone. They're off doing their thing. When that driver comes back, you go to the driver screen. And I am now dispatched. So I come back. I've got these two orders. They were delivered. So I'm going to say arrive all. And now, I can do a money drop. I can drop all as cash or drop each individual. Maybe one of them was paid with a credit card, but I'm gonna drop all of them as cash. And that completes the cycle. 
Now that is a completed route. You saw me enter the order. You saw me assign those to a driver. You saw me then dispatch that driver, but not before I sent an email to that driver, letting them know their route. Then I had that driver come back and say that they are now arrived and then do a money drop. All that's left to do is the end of the night is for that to uh, for that driver just to do a um, their own server bank. So here's their cashier report. So that's all there is, guys. That's as simple as I can make it. A uh, question in the chat: How does the customer pay with a credit card at door delivery? I'm trying to think the D190, Jeff, is that the one? Yeah, currently you can, if you want to pay at the door, you can definitely do it with the D190. Uh, believe it or not, the uh, A60 is great for that as well. You can pay right there at the door um, with those and it makes it real easy. And those integrate directly with your iPad or with your, um, if you're using the uh, V2 Pros, they integrate with those. So Scott's asking, does it mean that the driver needs to have an iPad uh, with them? If they want to do pay at the door, yes. Now, typically pay at the door is not that common. Um, typically, uh, most pl places will place the order. The person who's taking the order over the phone will also take the credit card payment at the door, at the phone. Um, and so all they really need to do is take the credit card slip with them to the, the door to have a signed and any tip added to it. Um, that's traditionally how it's done. Uh, but obviously there's a lot of flexibility here. And if they want to take uh, either a V2 or an iPad uh, to the door, have the person uh, sign on the iPad, they can then pay on the D190 or on the uh, PAX A60. I'm gonna go ahead and pay for this order. It's a delivery order. I'm paying for it now as if I were taking it over the phone. That order now is paid, order is settled. I can go through the same steps and assign that order to be delivered. Have that depart. Now they come back. When they come back in, they're gonna hit arrive, but there's no cash to be collected. There's no drop because that didn't happen. So we're not gonna drop that as cash because it's already paid for. It's already settled. Does that, did you see the difference there? I hope you do. Uh, next one is merchant wants customer to pay credit card charges like 3.5% to cover the charges. Can this be done on Aldelo Pay? Well, yeah, they can use the cash discount. So I got two orders. Let's click on them. Sign them. I love how fast that ditch dispatching is. Yes. It really is nice. Um, it's very quick. It's easy to do. And then like you just did to, to send out your orders to your customer, to your uh, driver, that makes it really easy. And the nice part is the driver receives these on their phone um, where they can look them up real fast and whatever, no matter what kind of phone they have, they click on the link and it will open it up in their, their preferred driving app, whatever they have on their, their system. And it will allow them to, ah, there he goes. He can actually, yep, there it is. Straight from their email. Yep. That's the actual email I just sent myself. And it shows the two orders that are fully paid. They don't have to collect anything at the door. You can all even see what the orders were by touching the little ticket icon. Okay. 
or I think there's no money to drop because they're both paid. Done. Where can we see the record of orders delivered? So you can actually, when you're in the recall screen, um, you can literally recall settled orders and you can see which ones are our delivery orders that are right there. Um, that's probably the easiest space to go look at them from the iPads. Um, when you're talking about uh, in the back office and stuff, you can go to financials and you'll have an entire payment journal section there. Um, and you can see what orders there, you know, you're gonna see, see here they are delivered. You're gonna be able to see the delivery orders in there as well. Um, so there's, there is more than one place to go see that information. Uh, on that, uh, this is a continuation of one of the tickets you had up above um, beforehand. On that ticket, can they give the customer a credit? Yes. So you would be able to go in, you'd go into payouts and do a refund and do a refund. And that would be on there, but you're not going to be able to do a credit where uh, the customer comes back and uses that credit at a later time. That's That's not a feature. Um, I would issue it as a gift card, to be honest. Um, that's an easy way of doing it, and it's fully trackable. And you would sell them a gift card for whatever the credit amount you want to do is. Um, well, I say real stores do it. Real stores do gift cards. Yeah, because then it's fully trackable. Yeah, down to the Yeah. The, the problem with doing um, store credits and giving people a, a piece of paper is, one, they're not easily tracked and, and people use them as a theft component. It's a way to steal. Um, gift cards, you know, who issued it, when it was, you know, uh, redeemed, how much it was redeemed for, what the remaining balance is, all this information is readily available in, in the back office. And so it's one of those situations that issuing a, a gift card for credits is a really best way to best practices. I mean, most any store you go to, that's how they're going to do it. 